I just am gonna make a sleeve to hold this bearing. I need something to go around it that I can weld to for a bracket. I was hoping for a piece of pipe that I could just bore out a tiny bit, but no such luck. So I'm gonna chop a little square off of here, stick it in the lathe, bore the center out, and then make this fit. It'll slide in there. I have a little bit of a backstop and then room for a snap ring on the inside, which is what it had originally. Get real fancy. Basically, I just want an excuse to use the lathe. So you guys saw the square we started with here. Yeah, and I test fit the bearing and it slipped right in there and got stuck. So it's gonna just stay in there for the moment. It's the perfect size. Yeah, which is good, but uh, I don't wanna take the piece out. Like I could tap it out from the back, but I'd have to take this out of the lathe and then it wouldn't go back in quite the same because it's a square. But now it's time to make this square round. And you can see I've just started, that's the highest point. So I've taken a little bit off of there. I'm just gonna keep chunking away at it. You? And that's how you make a uh, cylindrical sleeve out of a square chunk of steel. That's how you do it. Only took like three hours, but hey. <laughs> I can practice with the lathe anyway. Right? Yeah. And so now when you flip it around, it's going to be perfectly in the trash can. <laughs> perfectly centered. Yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> Awesome. Now there's a snap ring. Now I just have to cut in a groove for that. If I can figure out how to do that. And then I'll have a sweet bearing holder like half a day later. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. So this afternoon we went from this to that guy. Yeah. Let's switch over the world's worst snap ring pliers. Oh, I heard a snap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Made this little spacer and that. And it's been pretty much a whole day. You. <laughs> it's all very important stuff. Now we're a whole day closer to send. There we have it, an extra bearing. And there's our drivetrain. Yeah. All right guys, we're gonna take a quick break from this build to talk about the sponsor for this video, Curiosity Stream. Now Curiosity Stream is a streaming service made for those of you who are interested in, well, everything and anything. Curiosity Stream has over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles from the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Now I just got done watching How to Build a Supercar on Curiosity Stream, and it was awesome. You get a behind the scenes look at the McLaren factory. I'd highly recommend it once you do that coupon code. And you can get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month. Or for our viewers, you can go to curiositystream.com slash ghpc and use ghpc at checkout to get your first month for free. The content on Curiosity Stream covers science, nature, history, technology, society, lifestyle, and it's available worldwide. So go to curiositystream.com slash ghpc to get access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And for our viewers, use ghpc at checkout and you'll get your first month for free. All right guys, let's get back to building. Got the um, drive shaft out of the snowmobile. Got the driver's drive sprockets pressed off of it. It's 
ready to go. And then I unbolted this driveline flange from the uh, Triumph transmission, so if anyone buys it, it'll be missing this. I'm going to uh, make it fit on this shaft, so I'll lay the inside of this out a little bit. I can't go too far, it would be weak. And then I'll lay this down a bit, make them fit together super tight. Once we get everything else bolted up, I can just slide this to where it needs to be and then weld it in place. drivetrain is nearly complete. Um, I've got the chains and gears in there. And, uh, well, I'll show you how it fits in the car. That's where the other bearing is anyway. Nothing's mounted yet, of course, but the clutch will sit roughly there. And then got an extra bearing here to go on that shaft, which this shaft used to be a hexagon. Now it's all round, so this bearing can go anywhere on there. And then we've got this drive shaft yoke machined down, flange, whatever you want to call it, to fit on that shaft. So once I get everything mounted uh, more finalized, then I'll figure out this shaft is too long, so I'll figure out where I need to cut it and machine it down a little bit more. But it's, uh, it's pretty close to having a drivetrain. And also, I should point out, these U-joints are almost exactly the same size as the ones in the Odyssey, which, spoiler alert, broke. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, these are probably going to explode, so is the rear diff, but at this point we're just going to assemble it with these parts so that we can get an idea of how it's going to drive and what the gearing's like before we go changing any of those parts, because we might want a different gear ratio differential. We do want to upgrade all of that, but we're just going to put it together with the parts we have and just see how it works. Now I'm working on making a uh, mounting bracket for this whole chain case, which has to be super duper strong. the beginnings of this mounting bracket. It's quarter inch thick aluminum, nice and sturdy, nice and lightweight. And then this is just the plate, the base, base of it. That'll bolt on there. And then I'll weld all sorts of supports onto it to attach it to the chassis. Afterward, I'll, I'll add in a bracket that supports this bearing, which I'll probably tie into here on this side. And then from here, I'll make a nice sturdy bracket down to the frame of the car. So extra support for everything. This is probably one of the hardest, more technical parts of the build so far, huh? Yeah, it's a little complicated. Got a lot going on. A lot of moving parts, they all have to be perfectly spaced from each other if it's gonna work. Yeah. And it's gonna work. Well, it's gonna work. Before I took the snowmobile apart, I measured the distance between the primary clutch and the secondary clutch using this, and then I just set it that distance and put it on the shelf and didn't change it. So this is my measurement tool and um, it's a little harder to measure in here because there's less space around it, but um, it goes in there something like that. I did some math for once um, and I made this little spacer that goes in between the primary clutch and the secondary clutch. Um, and so I did some math on how 
big the center of the secondary clutch is relative to its output shaft. Um, so this will just go in there and hold them the right distance apart while I set everything up. And also, I have this piece here of that same aluminum track stuff we keep using everywhere, which I checked and it's very, very straight. I have clamp onto the primary clutch so that once I get the secondary where I want it here, I can then measure and get this surface. It'll be exactly parallel, so it won't be this way or this way or any way other than straight. Perfect. And then once I get that clutch situated, I'll sl slip this back into it and find a way to support it, probably just some wires and blocks and stuff. I'll block this up and then I can use this plate that I made uh, to make a, uh, I can make some brackets and weld them onto this plate. These bolts here are from the original transmission mount, so those are fairly sturdy. I'll make just a plate that goes across that I can weld to there. And then I've also got these ones here, which I'm not exactly sure what bolted there, I don't remember, but that's direct under the frame, so those are a good, between those eight mounting holes, and that should be enough to support this part. And then I have the bearing here, of course, and I'll make another bracket that goes down here somewhere for that. Doing lots of CAD work here, as you can tell by the scraps of cardboard everywhere. Yeah, so I've got this little uh, aluminum plate here. I'm building this whole mount out of aluminum for, you know, weight reduction and rigidity purposes. I've got this plate here mocked up out of cardboard and actually bolted on for this carrier bearing, which is kind of cool. Um, and then I've got these two supports that are gonna go something like this. Because I really hate working on things where you can't access the bolts, I made this nice little oval hole here so the socket fits in down there to get that bolt out. Nice. This side you can just stick it down from the top because it's left, it's not as steep of an angle and it's farther over, but yeah. This, uh, this is an idler bearing for a timing belt. And if I press this little center piece out, it should be almost exactly the right size for the shaft. And then I can weld to this outer surface for the bracket. But now we have a sweet setup here. We've got this extra long bolt, which I just had laying around. It's the only bolt I had that was the right thread pitch, <laughs> but it's the right length. So that fits through there with all of its threads sticking out. And then this bearing, which I should point out, the inside of this bearing just happens to be precisely the same diameter as the inside of that clutch. And then that whole setup just slides in there. And then the bolt threads in. And then you have the bolt all tightened down. 
And then this bearing here, the outside of it is a big steel sleeve I can weld to, so I can put it out here near the end and make a bracket that goes to this motor mount. So let's assume that bearing is welded there. All you have to do to remove the belt or the clutch is just undo this one bolt, slide the bolt out, slide the sleeve out, and now you can pull the belt off the back of the clutch. I uh, got this tacked on there. I basically just added a little flange onto the engine mount there. And uh, I removed all the clamps that were holding everything in place and it stayed where it's supposed to be. And now, when you turn that, it turns the output flange down there. Or the output shaft. All I have to do is weld the driveline flange onto it. <laughs> wow. I can't believe this is coming together this fast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's surprisingly quick. It's so cool. You know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of work to put all the wiring back on that and connect up grounds and power and all those shenanigans, but if we get all that done, we'll be able to put it on jack stands and spin the rear wheels. <laughs> you. It's gonna be rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. I'm not that good at making a supercharger noise. <laughs> we'll hear it tomorrow. <laughs> Still not bad. Anyway, yeah. Hopefully we'll hear it tomorrow. Oh yeah.